Hello, so in this section, let's chat about the budget. We're going to do a budget breakdown and help you get a better feel financially about what is about to take place for you. So you are planning obviously a ton of events and everything adds up. I'm sure you have already started to see that money is flying out really fast if you've already started purchasing things or getting quotes back from vendors. If you have not, then you're about to see all of that because in the upcoming sections, I break down vendor by vendor and you'll see how many components are added into planning a wedding. But for this one, we are going to talk specifically just about the wedding weekend itself and the budget for that. So just be aware that every other event that is linked to your wedding, so um, extra parties, that is all going to be additional costs, additional fees. So make sure you factor all of that into your budget as well as the honeymoon. If you are paying for your honeymoon, factor the honeymoon into your budget. So this budget that we're talking about may not be the sole alone budget. You may have other fees that you need to tack into that and account for. So I don't know if you're aware of this, but the average cost for a wedding in the United States is $21,000. Isn't that crazy? $21,000. And I'm sure you're thinking in your head, oh, there is no way I'll get up to that. I kid you not, you will see how fast money goes and it will be quite shocking because you're like, wait, I still have to do what? I still have to pay what? I still have to purchase what? Oh yeah, you'll be shocked. So just for the sake of this example, since the average is $21,000, i am just going to use $20,000 as an easy example. That way we have a perfect round number. So roughly um, $20,000 is going to be our budget for this wedding, for what we are pretending. So before I got married, I wasn't super familiar with all of the wedding etiquette or the unspoken wedding rules. So what do I mean by that? I did not know that it was normal or normalized that the bride or the bride's parents have to pay for the whole wedding. So what ended up happening? So my parents were kind enough to fund a majority of the wedding and my husband and I paid for what we could and then his parents also helped with certain vendors and details that they maybe aren't supposed to have to help with. So like I said, it is so, this isn't cookie cutter, this is not one size fits all for every wedding because finances are different for absolutely everyone. So um, maybe the groom and his parents would be willing to pay for maybe the flowers or maybe the DJ or maybe the limousine for after the wedding. So there are things like that that they can contribute. And then it's also said in some normalized traditions that the groom's parents would pay for the honeymoon for the bride and the groom. So I don't know if all of these facts are true. This is just what I found via research and what I found people to tell me that that's what is normal. And so whether that's true or not, I just wanted to share all of that information with you. That way you aren't caught off guard. Um, so rehearsal dinner though is normally covered by the groom's parents. So the rehearsal dinner immediately follows the rehearsal for the ceremony. It happens the day before the wedding most often. And normally the groom's parents cover that so they will cater in the food for that or the decorations or the room rental or whatever fees come along with the rehearsal dinner itself. So to give you a little bit of a budget breakdown here, some percentages that you can, you can fluctuate a little bit depending on your budget or what is most important to you because absolutely if 
one area of your wedding is more important to you than another, then don't stick with these percentages. Absolutely put more money in an area where you care more about and maybe take money out of these percentages for areas that you don't really care a whole lot about. So I would suggest for the ceremony, what is about typical is between four and 5% of the budget, of the whole budget for the wedding, goes towards the ceremony. So that's not a whole, whole lot, like in regards to a $20,000 wedding, you can expect to pay using these percentage points about a thousand dollars for the ceremony so that is what you need to maybe factor into your budget or get in your brain as a starting basis or a general idea of what you'll be spending for your ceremony and i will explain absolutely every single one of these factors later on in the course i'm just giving you the percentages that way you have a rough estimate and idea as I explain each vendor and what goes into booking each vendor or what goes into all the purchases that you need to make for these specific areas. So I won't be explaining all of those today or how those prices are um, finalized. This is just more of a, hey, this is normally for a $20,000 range, how you would want to split up your budget and roughly what that translates to dollar wise so for a ceremony like I said $20,000 wedding expect to pay four to five percent of your budget for your ceremony which is between $930 or $1,000 roughly uh, the wedding attire so this could be like your wedding dress I would say your shoes your, if you have a veil or a, a sash or a belt, your earrings. I don't think that it's probably super practical to put the groom's wedding attire in this as this is mainly just what you're expected to pay for as the bride or as the bride's parents. So we will let the groom's suit or tux rental be outside of this number. So that also needs factored into the budget if you are paying for your wedding with your fiance. So for a $20,000 wedding, I would say that it is pretty much on average about 10% of the budget. So nine to 10% of the budget will go towards your wedding dress and attire. So, and your accessories, which translates to about $2,000. So. And you can do less than that, absolutely. But I mean, veils are expensive. We talk about that later on. Wedding dresses are expensive and <clears throat> it just adds up fast. <laughs> so roughly that may be an idea of what you could spend on your wedding dress or what is normally what you see in a $20,000 wedding is about a $2,000 wedding dress or something Along those ranges, maybe a little less, maybe fifteen or sixteen hundred dollar wedding dress because then they're adding the shoes, the jewelry, the accessories, the veil, all that fun stuff. All right, for a twenty thousand dollar wedding, I would say about nine percent of the budget would be going towards photography, and that translates to about eighteen hundred dollars to about $2,000 for photography. That is about on average. I remember when I was pricing out different vendors for photography, I think I saw between, yeah, probably between $2,000 and $3,500 for the price range photography. I know, I know, it's a lot of money. Bear with me, <laughs> you know, these vendors can charge these amounts because they know that they are in demand. They know that people will pay these amounts because it's their wedding day. And of course it's their wedding day, so they have to have everything perfect. Therefore, they can charge their prices and, and raise them higher than maybe for other photography needs. All right, for a $20,000 wedding, 
maybe roughly between 5 and 11% of your budget for videography. So videography I have found to be about the same amount of money as photography. However, like I mentioned, if videography and photography are super important to you and you care about having photos and video footage after the wedding is done and having something that actually lasts instead of paying money for flowers that are going to die, you at least have photos and video footage. So if that's important to you, like it was to me, then you can allocate more of your funds towards these areas. So like I said, photography and videography have a similar charge to them. When I was pricing out videographers, I found them to be between 2000 and probably $3,500 as well. So if you spend about 5% of your budget, of your $20,000 wedding budget on videography, that would be about $1,000, which like I just told you, is not super common to find if it's someone newer, if they're an amateur, or if they are like an assistant to a videographer and they have the knowledge but they're just getting started, that might be doable. Now, if you're spending upwards of 11% of your budget on the videography, that might be around $2,500. So you see the range, it depends on who you find and it depends on the quality and the style of the videography. Okay, so the stationery is consisting of, say, the dates. It consists of the wedding invitations, maybe the wedding programs, and then also make sure you factor in the postage to get all of these invitations to people. So roughly, I would say your stationery may take between four and eight percent of your budget. I know that seems like a lot. It depends though for this section on how big your guest list is. Like if you have a very small guest list, obviously this charge is not going to be as significant. But if you have a massive wedding and you are inviting everyone you know, then yes, you will have to pay for more invites to be printed and postage to get them to everyone. So because like I, like you will find out soon, you have to send out save the dates and then you also have to send out the wedding invitation. So you're sending two mailings to each household, plus you'll be sending a thank you note, so that's more postage. Anyway, so stationary, between four and 8% of your budget, that equates to about $800 to $1,900. So that's the range. Okay, so the reception is the big kicker here. This is the biggest portion of your budget. So the reception here would be like the hall rental, the venue rental. It would be uh, the meal for the reception is included in this as well. This is not decorations. This is just the venue rental and the meal. So this is also not the DJ, that's separate. This is not the cake, that's separate. So the reception itself for a $20,000 wedding, depending on what type of venue you find, how nice it is, maybe the location, definitely will depend on where it's at. Like if it's in a city, the prices are going to be a lot more because the venue's in demand. So I would say probably between 26% of your budget up to 35% of your budget roughly for the reception, which like I said, includes the venue rental, includes the meal. So you can, in that percentage point, you can expect to spend between $5,800 and $7,000 on the reception. I know, these numbers are big. <laughs> it's a lot of money for a wedding. I know, you're starting to get the picture here. So this is why budgeting is very crucial because as you purchase things, as you sign contracts with vendors, that money is out the door. That money is accounted for. And so if you overspend in a certain area, another area is going to suffer. So you have to have a plan before 
you start spending your money. That way you know what you can actually spend. So for the music for the reception, that might be a DJ, it might be a live band. I would suggest for a $20,000 wedding, roughly four to 5% of your budget, which equates to about $1,000. So in general, you can probably get a DJ for around that price. For the baked goods, so the wedding cake, I think that a safe bet would be one to 2% of the budget. This is really low and you can do things um, more budget friendly in regards to the, bake, the bakery side of things, the wedding cake, because you can get a small wedding cake and then just get additional sheet cakes and that will be cost effective. And I talk all about this later. But that is how you can get this area of cost for the wedding down a little bit. That way you have a little bit extra room in other areas. So one to 2% of your budget would be safe for the, the wedding cake, which might be $230 to $400 roughly. That's the range I would guess. I would say for flowers, for a $20,000 wedding, if you are not going overboard with like flower centerpieces, like real flowers for centerpieces and flowers at the altar and flowers everywhere you look, that will be a completely different estimate. This is more so flowers that you pin on. So the corsages, the boutonnieres, um, the bouquets for the bride and the bridesmaids. This is what we're talking about for this budget. So I would say between four and 6% for the flowers, which is about $900 to $1,200. So that's what you can expect. Okay, here is a big one. So the decorations, this one can be quite a range because I do not know what your decoration style is. <laughs> if you are minimalistic, if you don't care about decorations, then you won't be spending a whole lot on this area. But if you want your venue to be transformed into a beautiful backdrop for your wedding pictures, then this might be something that you splurge on more and allocate more of your budget to. Something that's great about this particular area of the budget is that you can sell a lot of these items back. So there are constantly people getting married. So if you buy seat covers, you can sell those seat covers to another bride. If you buy lanterns for centerpieces, you can sell those lanterns back and get some of your money back. So. There are always brides out there looking for good deals. So at least with this area, you can get some of your money back. It won't be the full amount, but like I said, this area is so different for so many couples because I can't tell you if you are going to do need a small budget for this or a large budget for this because I don't know what you're visioning your wedding to look like. Decorations can transform the venue though. Let me tell you, it won't even look like the same place if you decorate it accordingly. So this could be tool for the backdrop. You could be renting like a, a backdrop that the venue has. You could be adding flowers, uh, like fake flowers to the back. You could be adding lighting. You could be adding this. Well, this, this includes the centerpieces, like I said. So all the decorations for the centerpieces, this would include seat covers if you buy seat covers. So anyway, decorations, this is endless. There are so many ideas for decorations. So this range is a wide one. It's a wide range. A $20,000 wedding, I would say a 3% to a 14% amount of your budget would go towards decorations. It's a wide range. This could be $600 up to $3,200. It's a wide difference, I know, but this is so up to you. It's hard to give an exact amount for decorations. Okay, for the transportation, so this would be the limo after the wedding. If you and your groom are going to ride in a limo, if you're doing a 
party bus, which I talk about later. I didn't do a party bus. I just wanted it to be me and James having that special moment after the wedding, just us two, because the whole day you're surrounded by people. So for us just to have that drive to the wedding reception to be with each other and be like, how are you feeling? Like We just got married. Um, you're my husband now. Like Just to have that special moment and soak in the gravity of what just happened. Like we just got married. So that was really cool. And so we did a limousine and that was a really smart choice. So I would say one to 2% of your budget would go towards the transportation. So that's three to $400 roughly. Okay, so rental items. This could be a wide variety of things. If you're needing to rent tables and chairs, normally that's included in the reception venue fee for the rental. So that, that's not what this is. Rental items, this might be something like a photo booth if you are renting a photo booth. So one to 3% of your budget, which would be roughly three to $600 of your budget. Now moving on to gifts. So this is also going to be a wide range that I can't tell you what you'll spend on your gifts because it's different for everyone. If you are going to spoil your wedding party and your parents, then this budget percentage is going to have to go up. If you are a deal finder and can find things for good prices, then this can save you money in this area. But for gifts for your bridesmaids and your groomsmen and your parents and the flower girls, you know, this adds up and the ushers. So I would say three to 7% of your budget which can be $600 to $1,600. So if you're buying earrings for your bridesmaids or tumblers for your bridesmaids or like coffee mugs for your groomsmen, like this is where all of this adds up. Okay, so, oh, I did factor in extra parties. So like if you're having a day after brunch, after the wedding, or if you are having an additional celebration after you return from the honeymoon, this can be a extra part of your budget. So I factored in about 4% of your budget towards this, which is about $800. That way you have that to work with. I also added in miscellaneous to give you a little bit of wiggle room. So this could be one to 4% of your budget, and that would be about $800 and also just know that taxes are going to be put into this as well. Please factor those into the budget as that will raise each price as well. So hopefully all of this gives you more clarity as to what you can maybe be expected to pay in regards to a budget breakdown. So what percentage of your budget goes where? This gives you a bird's eye view. Obviously, like we've said multiple times, this is not a one size fits all. So this may not be your budget breakdown for your wedding. This is just a general overview of what you normally see for a $20,000 wedding. So who is paying for what? This is the next part of this conversation. <laughs> who is paying for what? Are you and your fiance paying for everything? Are your parents pitching in? Are his parents pitching in? How are you dividing all of this up? What I told you about the stereotypical norms, that doesn't have to mean anything. Have these conversations. If you absolutely cannot pay for things, if your parents cannot pay for things, then be upfront and say, hey, like either I'm gonna need your parents to help also, or we're just going to have to lower our wedding budget and we may want these things but we just can't financially do that right now so it's important to have these conversations and absolutely have conversations about what amount of money people are willing to spend comfortably because it's not worth it to go in debt and to be financially um, strapped and stressed out and overwhelmed just because you're overspending for the wedding so I was told 
I was the most organized bride ever by so many people and I attribute that to my itineraries and my spreadsheets. So having a spreadsheet is so helpful when budgeting. It, you have all of your information in one place. You can create your own. Um, you can just use mine as a reference point and maybe model your spreadsheet after mine. But I shared and put all of my information in one place. So what did I, what was purchased? How many were purchased? How much did it cost per unit? So um, I had the vendor, I had the order number, I had the date it was expected to come in. Like I had all of these different factors all in one spreadsheet and I put it in a Google spreadsheet, meaning my fiance could access it, my mom, my future mother-in-law at the time could access it, and it was updated in real time. So when someone purchased something or when someone signed a contract with a vendor, everyone could see that. And so it was so helpful that you don't have to relay every purchase onto the whole team of people that are contributing financially. Everyone can just see what still needs done or what has already been done. So spreadsheet is super helpful. Please start recording in a spreadsheet the second you buy anything for the wedding. That is going to be very helpful. It will help you see where you're at in your budget as well. You can add it up very quickly. So if this is overwhelming you though, if you are like, I had no idea weddings were so expensive and I'm freaking out a little bit, Jazz, I get it. I understand weddings are expensive. So what you can do and something that I did do was turn clutter into cash to pay for the wedding. So if you have a closet full of clothes that you don't even wear, this would be a fantastic opportunity to sell those clothes to make some extra money. And you're going to be thankful that you're getting rid of extra clutter because when you move, once you get married, uh, you won't have to transport all of these extra clothing items. So it's pretty smart. It's a win-win. And like I mentioned, this budget, this $20,000 wedding budget was just for the wedding weekend pretty much. Um, you need to have conversations regarding your budget with your fiance. What means more to you? What means more to you? The wedding weekend itself, so the ceremony and the reception, or having a really nice honeymoon, does that mean more to you? Or does having a down payment on a house mean more to you? Or does having a bigger savings mean more to you? Because you can use this money that you would spend on a wedding and maybe make the wedding budget a lot smaller and use the leftover money to go towards your honeymoon or towards a down payment on the house or towards your savings or investments. So what matters most to you as a couple? This is where this conversation is very important as well as if your parents are contributing financially to the wedding. I have heard of parents telling their kids, um, hey, I have this amount of money to contribute to the wedding. You can use this money how you want. So if you want to buy all of the stuff for your wedding, go for it. If you want to use half of this money for your wedding and half of it for a down payment on a house, absolutely. So just have conversations about what is most important to you because there is in fact a marriage and a lifetime together that comes after the wedding weekend itself. So yes, you want the wedding weekend to be magical and beautiful and amazing, and it will be. Just know that you do not want to fight about finances once you're actually married. So be smart, be wise, think ahead, and definitely don't overspend or outspend your budget. So that's why we come up with a budget. We come up with that framework so you don't get out of it. This is a safety net to protect you from conflict that arises in the future over finances. So spend what you're comfortable with and I am sure it's going to be an amazing day. It does not matter how much money you have or not. It seriously 
is going to be an amazing day because you're marrying the person that you love and want to spend the rest of your life with and you'll have the most important people in your life all together in one place under one roof for that day. It is so cool. That hardly ever happens in life. All of your favorite people will be with you on that day watching you profess your love for your best friend, for who you're marrying and spending the rest of your life with. It's an awesome day and it doesn't matter about the money. It matters about the marriage that's happening afterwards. So hopefully this helps you, gives you a little bit more of a picture on the finances that can be spent on a wedding, as well as how to allocate those funds towards different sections of the wedding. Don't let this stress you out, but definitely be proactive and use that spreadsheet as you start making purchases and signing contracts with vendors. That will save you a lot of stress. Hopefully this helps and please continue to the next section. On that y'all, we don't just do life and relationship videos. We have our bonus Fridays where we put up life and relationship videos. Uh, we feel led to do a Friday video. Uh, but also, uh, you go to jamesandjazz.com, click on that videos tab. It'll scroll you down to three different sections of videos that we film. We use spiritual videos on Monday where we've done topical stuff. Right now, we're actually doing a Bible study with us. all the book of James. Now we're in the book of John. Then we'll go into another book and another book and so on and so forth as we feel led. So I think you'll really enjoy some of the spiritual videos that we have, and it'll help you to grow spiritually. We want to help you to grow mentally, spiritually, and physically. Which, and relationally. And relationally, um, which leads me to the second uh, topic is physically fit videos. Um, and we're trying to help you to get in shape, to work out. If you're planning for a wedding, you still got to get those workouts and that'll help you to have more energy and just feel better about yourself. So whatever you're doing in life, it's so important to do your body a favor and work out. And I know that a lot of people don't have a lot of time. Maybe you don't want to drive to the gym. Well, we've done a lot of stuff right here at the house in our studio here. We've done workouts with dumbbells, workouts with resistance bands, cardio in place. We've done a little bit of kettlebell stuff. So we're showing you how you can work out at home with the equipment that you have. There are full length workouts. You work out with us. And then there's also instructional videos where we show you the exercises quickly. You can take notes and do it on your own time. But I think that these videos will bless you. And then on our final section, our final tab, when you click on videos is that life and relationships, as I said already, that is our bonus Friday videos where we talk about what's going on in our life, which the wedding was going on in our lives. And that also relates to relationship stuff. So um, life and relationships, a great tab as well. We have our how we met video uh, in that section and a lot of other different stuff. We have our wedding, we have our proposal, uh, bachelorette party, all that different stuff. So you guys can learn a little bit about us and, and what we've done in life. And um, beyond that, when you're on our homepage, just uh, if you scroll to the top of the bottom, you're gonna see our social media links, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, be sure to follow and like, and YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube. And when you scroll to the bottom of the page, you're gonna see our subscribe to our email list. Encourage you to do that so you can see when new courses come out, because I think she's thinking about working on new courses. Yes. And uh, you can also, on the bottom of that homepage, you can book us to come and speak at a speaking engagement. We've got chapels at Christian schools, and maybe you want us to come and put on a workout somewhere um, or speak at a Christian retreat, whatever it may or be. Or a conference. Or, or a, a conference. Church. Yeah, we would love to do that. So just send us the details in the book us. Uh, section and anything I'm missing my love? Yeah, if you would like to partner with us, we would appreciate all of your prayer for our ministry and then you can also partner with us financially if you feel led. No obligation, but on our website jamesandjazz.com, there's a tab up at the top that says donate and it instructs you on how you can donate via PayPal, Patreon, or Venmo. So oh. Thank yep. you. Every little bit helps. <laughs> yep. And yeah, we love you guys and we hope that this video encourages you to plan the wedding of your dreams stress-free to your yeah. dream man. And um, it's going to be great. Enjoy. All right, Love you guys. Take it easy, y'all.